everybody. Welcome inside another episode of What's Cooking at Vincent Joe's. We have executive chef Angelo Loria with us, and it's fall. We have it is. a great fall treat here, Halloween, Thanksgiving, the, the whole season really in one good dish, right? Yeah, you know, the, the, the first smell of anything cold, anything below 60 degrees, everyone's feeling pumpkin spice everything, too. Mm -hmm. So we decided to get on the bandwagon here in a little twist uh, on a, a, a really a, a great dish and a scone. Uh, it, it's, it's great uh, for the breakfast. It's great uh, for, uh, for a nice dessert. Um, it, but it's just a nice treat to have. Uh, could do a lot of different things in scones. With this one in particular, we're going to talk about um, a pumpkin spice scone. Okay. And this is the real pumpkin spice. This isn't the the artificial no, stuff this, that you this, see this, someplace. This is this is real pumpkin too. And oh, wow. the key ingredient here, the secret that we use here is we use a we use a nice dark black strap molasses. Oh, okay. So molasses is super dark. It um, it pours out thick, uh, and it gives it a real um, dark color and almost a almost a burnt, but it's a great uh, great flavor uh, to it. So we're we're gonna see how all that uh, works out too. Uh, whenever you're making any kind of um, uh, pastry, any kind of baked good, you want to make sure you measure everything exactly. So if you're following the recipe at home, you want to really make sure that you've got everything measured out uh, the way we have it on here. Okay. Uh, it's one thing when you cook savory side and you're sauteing, you can always add more salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Once you bake this off and cook, bring it out of the oven, if it doesn't taste good, then you've got to start all uh, over again too. So there's no, there's no going back. Um, when you do it. Uh, when it comes to uh, baking too, you mix all your dry ingredients together, you mix all your wet ingredients together, and then once you have them combined to, the, to where you want them, you mix them, uh, everything together. Okay. So, dry with dry, dry with wet dry. with wet. So to start off with the dry stuff, you want to hold that? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, in here we've got our flour, we've got baking soda, baking powder, we've got brown sugar, and we've got all the flavors of pumpkin pie. So we've got cloves, we've got uh, ground cloves, we've got ground ginger, we've got ground nutmeg, we've got ground cinnamon. Okay. Take a smell of that. Oh. Smells yeah. like pumpkin Smells like pie. my grandparents' house. <laughs> So you pour that in there, and if you can just give that a little whisk, mix everything together. Uh, again, with something like this, you want to sift the flour. So you want to put it through a strainer, make sure you got no clumps in it too. So and just kind of crush up the... Yeah, crush everything up and just uh, keep mixing along there. Uh, and then we're going to get to the uh, pretty much the most important part of... Um, of this whole procedure is uh, adding the butter. When you add the butter, we want to break it up in there, and we're going to use a fork to do it. Okay. Uh, but you want to break it up in there too, so uh, it stays uh, pea size. You don't want it melted on there too, because you know when you get that nice flaky uh, scone or you get a nice flaky biscuit, that's because they left the butter, uh, little chunks of butter there. That when it cooks okay. down and it melts, it gets flaky, it fluffs up. It's absolutely delicious. And you said something about making sure the butter's cold. Butter needs to be cold. Yeah, you don't want the butter melted. You don't want the butter warm. You want it to stay as cold as possible, so you get those clumps as, uh, as many clumps as you can. Well, about Perfect. pea size, you know, the size okay. of a green pea. Yeah. Have you had green peas before? I actually okay, have. Good. I know. It's, uh, I haven't had much. Like, this would be my first scone. <laughs> so now we got all the pieces broken up there. We're going to add, we're going to add our uh, butter. If you want to give that a scrape. Perfect. And so what you do, uh, you can leave it whole, but I cut it into small pieces to kind of help the process of what we were doing. Uh, so the smaller pieces you, you start with, the less you'll have to really work it and mix it. Okay. So when it comes to this, you just want to break it up with your mm -hmm. uh, spoon or your fork. If you don't have a fork, use two knives. If you don't have knives, use a spoon. Um, if you don't have any of that stuff, use a whisk, use your hand. You just want to make sure your hand doesn't melt the butter. Okay. That's the most important thing. And you got all this stuff uh, going on in here. Uh, and Pumpkin, uh, you could, so the pumpkin we used here is from a can, but uh, right now we have uh, uh, pie pumpkins uh, here oh, at the okay. store too. So you can actually take that and um, roast it off and use that pulp oh, and wow, make yeah. an even fresher taste. Uh, okay. The ingredients of the pumpkin uh, puree that we use today is pumpkin, okay. uh, but a lot of them aren't. You know, uh, so uh, if you want something as natural as you can get it, if you want to make get that whole homemade uh, feel, mm -hmm. you roast off the pumpkin yourself. You can take the seeds out. Wash them off real good. Toss them in a little bit of uh, olive oil and some salt and pepper. Throw them and in the oven. Throw them in the oven, yeah. and you've got roasted uh, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds. Yeah, haven't had one of those. Shocking, right? Yes. Um, so, so uh, you know, uh, with Halloween coming up, with uh, Thanksgiving coming up, with uh, with Christmas coming up, all the holidays that are coming up uh, right now, this is just a great dish to bring over, whether it's a brunch or whether it's a dinner. You bring it over to someone's house, and now uh, you kind of uh, 
gives a little twist on the pumpkin pie. Right, yeah. You know, because pumpkin pie is delicious, but you're going to be having pumpkin pie probably for three and a half months straight. Right. Yeah, this would be something you can even bring to Thanksgiving yeah. or. So if you can see, if you can see right here, you got the little pea-sized pieces mm -hmm. of butter. It's all broken down a yeah. little bit. So once we have that all set, we're going to put it aside, and we're going to mix our wet ingredients. All right. So we've got, in here we've got uh, heavy cream, we've got our pumpkin puree, we've got our molasses, and we've got our vanilla. Okay. Put that all into here. And that molasses is really thick. It's the stuff that's, uh, that dark stuff right there. Mm -hmm. So good. It kind of brings a great unique flavor into your pumpkin pies, into your uh, Fall, uh, fall pastries and cooking. Is that your uh, your secret right there? Yeah, well, it's not a secret anymore, but yeah, it's, it's uh, a. <laughs> That's your specialty. It really makes a difference. Go ahead and mix that up. All right, here we go. Yeah, better you do the egg. Remember last time. <laughs> we'll add one egg to it, and we really want to mix it up good. Get all those uh, together, and whenever I portion out the molasses. Um, you can put it in a separate cup, but a lot of times uh, with doing with that, you'll get a portion of it stuck there. So that's why you saw when we portioned it out here, we put the molasses right on top of the pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's, it's, it, it, it'll absorb into the pumpkin. You don't lose any of that into the bottom of the bowl. Okay. Same thing if you cook with honey. Uh, the same way, because you, if you uh, use, put honey, put it in a little uh, container, you're going to end up losing a bit of that honey. Okay. So you did a great job there. Now we're going right. to mix it into here. So this is gonna. This is a, once we get it all mixed together, it's gonna form a little bit of dough. I'll take that from you. Perfect. And again, you can do this in your food processor. If you do it, just pulse it three, four times okay. on the butter part of it. Um, but just like a long division, it's better if you do it. It always comes out better when you do it by hand than using a calculator. All right. Yeah, but we'll go with your method. Long division always works better for me if I don't do it. <laughs> so we'll go with your method. And so you'll end up getting about 16 um, little mini scones out of this, and they freeze great, so you, okay. can, ba you can bake them off. And, uh, and then that obviously makes them last a little bit longer, too. Sure, then you can pull out what you need. You know, you, you, you want to have them as fresh as possible, fresh out of the oven. So mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to baked goods, you either uh, store it at room temperature, uh, for most of them, mm -hmm. store it at room temperature, or you freeze it. Okay. And that's the way to, to preserve, uh, you know, from the date you cook it. I'm going to grab some gloves okay. and kind of mix it up a little bit. Anyway, now we've got our gloves on. You want to mix it up, but again, you're still focusing on not melting that butter. Uh, you want none of that butter melted because you want that flakiness to mm -hmm. it. And so then we've got the baking powder in here and we've got the baking soda and that's going to help it rise a little okay. bit too. So we're going to roll it out to about a half an inch. And then you just have to adjust how much you uh, uh, roll, how much you cook it for, how long you cook it for, by the uh, how thick it is. So if you got ones that are two inches thick, then it's going to take a lot longer, mm -hmm. higher likelihood to burn. So what, you cook uh, it, uh, you're, I think you're just about to answer how long. So, so you're going to cook it uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. But going back to one of my uh, culinary school instructors, you're going to cook it till it's done. <laughs> and the way you test it is you take a toothpick, you stick it in there. If it comes out clean, it's done. Okay. If it comes out where it's bringing up some of the 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 batter, uh, per se, the dough, oh, that's good. Yeah, uh, then um, you're going to have to uh, cook it for a little bit longer. That's good. So now we got it formed right here. We're going to go to a lightly floured surface. We're going to roll it out onto there. Okay. Knead it just three, four times. You want to form it into a, a rectangle. Make sure you got enough flour, not too much, but enough where it won't stick. Okay. Then we take out our handy dandy rolling pin. And whenever you roll something out, give it a turn. So just to make sure it's not sticking. 
so square, rectangle, some people like doing it in a circle. Uh, I prefer the square because then you're more likely to get a more even cut. Mm -hmm. So about the size of a sheet of paper. Cut that out. So what, uh, those two, the white and the yellow in there, is that like the egg? That's butter. Oh. So you got that big, big flaky butter, yeah. you're going to be able to taste how flaky it gets there. It's uh, absolutely Perfect. delicious. So about the size of a sheet of paper, just like that. Take some scissors, or you can take a knife and just give it a cut. Right down the center? Right down the center, yep. You don't want to tear it, something like this. You want to make sure you do a, a kind of an even cut. And okay. now, uh, easiest way to go is you cut, just cut a little bit like that. You're just cutting your individual scones now. At this yep, point. exactly. Actually, cool. we're cutting a, a double portion. Now we're going to cut triangles because generally scones are uh, in triangles, okay. just like that. And they're free form too. So if the edges aren't uh, perfectly even, that's okay. Okay. A lot of times, um, even chef, well, especially chefs, but people at home get so worked up because, oh, it's not absolutely perfect. They'll throw some out, whatever. Mm -hmm. All of this is, is money that you spent on ingredients, too. And so it'll all taste the same regardless it, it, of it what It will shape all it is. taste the same. And you try, try to make them as uniform as possible. Mm -hmm. But if they're not, uh, it's a, at no point should you think that you're a failure as a, as a home chef as, as you're doing it. Oh, we, uh, and before we started all this, we uh, preheated our oven to 400 degrees. 400? 400 degrees. We're going to bake it for about uh, 10 minutes to give it a look. Okay. And we might need to turn it in the oven. That is how your oven heats up. Okay. So now that we've got them like this. Perfect. We've got Throw a sheet pan sheet. with parchment paper. You don't want them touching in the sheet. No, right? no. You want to give, give them a little bit of space because they're going to to pop up a little bit. Okay. Look at that. There we go. Uh, now from here, we're going to throw them in the oven. Perfect. All right. We've got the scones in the oven now. Now it's time to make the glaze. It'll be a perfect time so perfect. they come out of the oven, glaze them while they're warm. That glaze will set over it, it'll uh, melt, it'll be absolutely delicious. So, uh, we've got powder, here you hold this. Right. We've got powdered sugar. Boom. We've got all the same spices we used in the actual um, scone. Okay. So from your, from your cloves, to your nutmeg, to your cinnamon, to your ginger, And then to kind of, you can go ahead and mix that up a little bit, get them uh, kind of, get it kind of going. Uh, and we've got a little bit of pumpkin puree, we're gonna add that to it. Oh, the right. great thing about this recipe, it's one can, takes care of the scones, and then uh, the actual uh, frosting as well. Oh, so you don't have to. So you don't have to store it for, for three keep... months and realize it's moldy in your fridge for, <laughs> right. uh, so come keep Easter, mixing? keep mixing. And then a little bit of heavy cream. See, I was getting the, the pumpkin uh, colors yeah. coming through. Remind me of Halloween real quick. And that's the thing, you try to enjoy, um, I know this is, this is a festive thing, but the reason that uh, pumpkins are so in right now because they're in season. Okay. Uh, you know, so it, it's a delicious time, so you're eating seasonally. Uh, and with pumpkins, it's such a great um, vegetable. It doesn't have to be just for uh, desserts. Pumpkins are great in a risotto, pumpkins are great uh, for a soup. Uh, you know, even uh, cool, if you take that pumpkin, you hollow it out, you make a pumpkin soup, and you serve it right out of the pumpkin. Oh, so, wow, okay, yeah, that's festive. That's a way to keep it festive, and right. you're using everything. Uh, the big thing we, we talk about is, um, uh, we're talking about in the store, and then people should be talking about more and more, is we throw out about 30% of what we buy uh, oh, wow. of food. Uh, and that's the average. So mm -hmm. it could be 50, and it could be 10, but 30% uh, is the average, too. So uh, you're paying for everything you take home, so use as use much it, of it as yeah. you can. Looks great. <laughs> Looks great, it. absolutely. Learn how to, it's a little thing, get me through. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So the finished product right here. It's got it's an absolutely delicious tasting glaze. 
I suppose that means we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it, absolutely. Delicious. That's delicious. Really is. So, and try as, as you go. You know, it's always right. a good thing too. Make sure once you know you got the final product, it tastes like this. Yeah, exactly. So when you get to, so you're gonna get your scones. Uh, we've got these already glazed, but you can take them out. You can spread them out with a spoon. Uh, you can spread them out with a knife. You can just dip them in there too. Your choice. Oh, yeah. um, it's just, it's a delicious way. It's a festive way to keep the ho the pumpkin holiday going mm -hmm. uh, all throughout the all throughout the fall here. Yeah, that's great. And. Uh, you know, Halloween is making me feel like Halloween. I could dress up as a chef. That'd be, that'd be great. I got, I got extra, I got extra chef coats. Yeah, you can huh? keep the apron, too. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but again, um, all your, your needs, we got, we'll, we'll sell those in the store by special order. You want to order them, give us a day's notice. Okay. We'll make them for you, $9.99 a dozen. Oh, wow. We have the rest, we'll have the recipe posted um, on our, uh, our website, so you can uh, take a look at that. We'll give you the recipe as well, so you can post it on um, Shelby TV's website. Uh, it's super simple, right? There was nothing. No, I, hard. this is something I feel I could make alone without your guidance. That's great. That's great. And then we just want, and again, cooking should be fun. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be stressful. Right. Uh, and we want to make it as enjoyable and tasty as possible. Yeah. So again, thank you so much for uh, coming out. Yeah, and again, you said it's available on your website if you want to check out how to yep. do it. And it, yeah, I just can't, the smell, it, it reminds me of, it tastes, I don't know if the taste, but it looks a lot like a, a gingerbread type of, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's completely different things, but. You know, they're, they're, they've got a few different ingredients in it, but for the most part, the molasses. Mm -hmm. the, the molasses is really what, and the ginger is what brings that gingerbread flavor out. So it's, um, it is good, but the, the key important, the, the secret, or not so secret ingredient is the molasses that's <laughs> molasses. in there. And so then uh, you can slightly tweak that as you move closer to the holiday season. Uh, the winter as you make your gingerbread cookies for uh, exactly for so that. these aren't gonna these are a little too thick a little they're not as hard as gingerbread cookies will be but you'll tweak the recipe and we'll have something online about making gingerbread cookies as well perfect well I appreciate you uh, showing me this recipe and hopefully I can uh, take this over to my family's house and they'll enjoy my version of it. perfect sounds great thank you <laughs> yep thank you for watching another edition of what's cooking at Vincent Joe's